know, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and it's upon you because he's anointed us to preach the gospel to the poor. Amen? Set at liberty them that are bruised. Jesus gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He handed us the baton, as it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17, that you and I, through 21, he, he, he unveils what he did in the aspect of he's given us the ministry of reconciliation, to reconcile the world back into his Father in a covenant with relationship with him. Amen? Isn't that a good thing? But you know what's so cool about that? He trusts me and you with it. He trusts us. Maybe you ought to start trusting yourself a little bit. Hello? I believe that's part of the reason why Pastor Justin is ministering to us on our righteousness. That we don't stand in our own righteousness. That's as filthy as rags. If you look at that way, but you are not as filthy rags. Amen? Say, I'm not filthy rags. Say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah, see, we're in Christ. And if, if, you, if Christ is in you and you are in Christ, then Christ is in you. He's the hope of glory. So you be, have become the hope of glory. You're the hope of glory. You're the hope of the manifested glory of God on the face of the earth. He is going to, dis, uh, he is going to be a distributing center through you and through me. What, we have to have a stronger revelation of who we are before we can do more for our, our, our God, our king, our daddy, and our brother. Come on. You got to keep digging into this because Pastor Justin has been unveiling them, an amazing message to us where our righteousness is concerned. And you got to get this anchored into the heart of your soul and every part of your being. This has to be in you. Say, it's in me. It's in me. Well, praise God. Well, tonight we're going to talk about fear versus faith. Woo! There's a battle going on. Fear versus faith. There's a war going on between fear and faith. The reality of it all it's, 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 it's something that takes place all day, every day. You have the opportunity to live in fear or you have the opportunity to live in faith. And you'd be surprised at how much fear you got going on in your life sometimes. Yeah. You just, you're afraid to do some things. Why are you afraid to do them? Come on. I love what Brother Osteen did years ago because he hated to fly, but he knew the Lord was calling him to a worldwide ministry. He did not want to fly. And he said, and he, you know, he did, he booked a flight to go on a mission trip and he was sitting there and he had, he was like a white knuckle dry, you know, cedar. I mean, his, he is clenched on the whole entire time. And yeah, you know, he praying, doing everything he can to get there. He finally gets there and the devil says, well, I'm going to kill you when you get back. And it dawned on him, look, you couldn't kill me when I got over and you ain't going to kill me when I go back. Come on, you've got to fight your fears. You have more power over your fears. You have the power over the fears in your life. Yes. You're the one that's got to slap it down and reset. <laughs> Say slap down, slap down. Reset. reset. What do you reset to? You reset to who you are in Christ Jesus. Yes. You reset to the revelation knowledge that you are the righteousness of God, that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. And there's, you, God has already promised you the victory that overcometh the world, even your faith. So you even have the faith to get the job done. Yeah. You just need to walk in that faith rather than that fear. Yeah. Right? Faith versus fear, faith wins. Say, faith wins. Because you know what? You can have faith in your fears. <laughs> so faith is winning. You have more faith in the bad stuff going on in your life than you do the good stuff. Because you talk about it all the time. Out of the full of the mouth, the heart speaks. Amen. You sit there and listen to somebody for just a short time, you can find out exactly where they are. Whether they have faith in God or they have faith in fear. Because they're going to tell you all the problems that are going on, and they've got faith, more faith in those problems than they do in their God that can handle those problems. With man, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Amen? Amen? Amen. So we've got to learn how to build up our faith in God. Say faith in God. It's so important because so many people want to put faith in principles. Whoa, come on now. I want to, if I, Pastor Rick, if you just tell me how to do A, B, C, and D, I will get to E. Just give me the blueprint. Tell me how to do it. Okay, faith in God. You know what God says? Go over there to the land I'm going to show you. What <laughs> land? The one I'm going to show you, but you need to start going first. <laughs> Hello. That's what he told Abraham. 
Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. But it's got to be in a person, not in a system. Yeah, that's good. <sighs> Hello. I'm telling you, you're going to, there's so many, this is seven principles to get this and eight principles to get that, ten principles. You, you're principled out. <laughs> Go to the principal's office, amen? <laughs> you know, seriously. Yeah. Don't you feel like that sometimes? Yeah. And what we have to do is we have to put more focus on who owns the system. Who knows the system? Who created the system? And just tap into the system himself, and that's God. Yeah. Just fall back in love with God. Yes. Just go to God, what do you want from me today? Yeah. When's the last time you did that? Hello? It's right, you know, we, we claim to be Christians and we claim to be, to be doers of the word, but how often are we actually hearing and doing whatever it is God's telling us to do? Or are we just living on yesterday's manna? Mm. And you know what yesterday's manna's turned into, right? Maggots and worms. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, if you try to say, you know what I'm saying? Borrowed yesterday's stuff. It's nasty. See, God's looking to impart into us every single day. It's a walk of faith. But it's also called a relationship that you have with him, an intimacy that you and I have to continuously develop. That's why we worship, that's why we're in here in this presence. When you step into the presence of God, when God shows up like he did a while ago, and we're able to just minister to him, he begins to minister back to us. Amen. There's a two-way street going on here. All of a sudden, because you get your eyes off your problems, and you get your eyes on the solution. Amen. He's the solution. Amen. Right? And everything else becomes easy. It's not that complicated. Seek ye first the kingdom of who? God. God. God's, God's God. Seek God. Delight yourself in the Lord. Not in the principle. Did it say in the principles of the Lord? Just get so excited about doing what you're supposed to be doing. No, he doesn't say that. Delight yourself in me. Just delight being with me. Because whoever you're hanging around with is who you're becoming. It's, it's rubbing off on you. You show me. How many of y'all had mom and daddy said that to you? My mama said to me, I said, you show me your friends, I'll show you who you are. I think about my friends a little bit. Do I really want to be like some of the people I'm hanging around with? I did. I really had to make a, a why. I'm going, oh, wait a second here. Hold on. <laughs> I know what my friends are doing. Come on. Hey, it's the truth. You can't play with the fire and not get burned. You can't wall around with the pig slop and not get some of it on you. Right? That's, anyway. Hallelujah. I don't know why we went that direction, but we went that direction. Amen? Now, um, where do I start? That was the warm-up. How's that sound? That's pretty good, huh? <laughs> there's two types of, there's two types of fear, Okay? And we're kind of talking about it already. I want you to write that down. There's two types of fear. There's the fear of man, and then there's the fear of the Lord, or the fear of God. There's the only two types of fear that there are. You either fear man, or you fear God. The fear of God is a whole lot better. Amen. Recognizing what kind of a fear that is. Not afraid that God's going to zap you or punish you for something. That's not what he's looking to do. Go back to John 10, 10, draw that line in the sand that you've heard me preach about over every time I get up here. I feel like I, I mention it or my wife will mention it. Draw that line. Everything that's good that's coming to you comes from God. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. Yeah. Every bad thing that's happening to you is coming from the devil. Right. And when you say the fear of man, you fear, the fear of the flesh. Yeah. See, we were not created. We weren't created to walk like we're walking on the face of the earth. God created us to be like him. Amen. Yes. Amen. Glory. Hello? Yes. Pause. Sila. Yeah. Really? That's what he created us to be like. Yeah. And then you know what's cooler? It's Jesus, what Pastor Justin's been preaching, has bought back our right place in Christ Jesus. Amen. Isn't that cool? So, we're supposed to be acting like God, not like man. There you go. Mm, mm, 
Don't stone, don't throw a stone at me. <laughs> Seriously, we're supposed to be, as, what is it saying in, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1? Be ye imitators of God, as dearly beloved children imitate their, what, father. Yes. Yes. Because why? Jesus is the one that said, pray this way, our father, not my father, just pray to my father, my father's going to take care of you. Fear of man, fear of God. The fear of God is worshipful. Amen. It's worshiping him. Yeah. It's a reverence. It's what we just got through reading in Psalms 112. The fear of the Lord is to say, God, I believe you more than I believe anything else that man can do to me. I'm trusting you, God, with my life. I don't care if everybody else says I need to do this, this, and this. Your word and you, yourself, are telling me this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I choose to do what you tell me to do rather than what everybody else is telling me to do in any situation that, that I face in my life. Because I put my trust in you. I don't put my trust in man. The carnal mind, Pastor Justin preached a little bit about this on Sunday morning. The carnal mind is an enemy against God. What the physical fleshly person that this is all they're thinking about is the natural world. That's the enemy against God. And as he said in Proverbs chapter 3, lean not on your natural own physical way of thinking. Lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge you. So you're going, okay, God, how do you want to do this? You can sit in your cubicle at your workplace or wherever you are and you can tap into God and just go, God, how do you want me to do this today? Yeah. You, you, it doesn't matter. That's, you know, they thought Einstein was a little cuckoo. You know how he discovered what he, all that he discovered? He had this saying, God, if I were you, what would I do? And they thought he was lunatic trying to put himself equal with God. No, you, I, you don't have to try. Jesus already did. Yes. Jesus bridged that gap. And so the opposite of worshiping God is the fear of what life can do to you. So anything in your life that's fearful, it's not God. If you're afraid, how am I going to pay my bills? You are in the natural. I'm a, oh, you're afraid about how your kids are going to work out. You are in the natural. Because the man that worships the Lord, his generation will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house. Wealth and riches. Not electricity. (laughs) Come on. You see this, but but it's not seeking the wealth and the riches. This is part of, when you hang out with God, God gets on you. And God's not lacking anything. Your pursuit is going to determine what you have. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. Let's talk about fear versus faith. We'll go to Mark eleven twenty two. 22. Have faith in God, right? We don't have to go there. I'm just going to read a couple of things to you. Have faith in God. That's what it says. And Jesus said to them, have faith in God. We've been talking about faith on Wednesday nights. We're talking about faith versus fear tonight. And the thing you got to have faith in is not the systems. you got to have faith in God. Say, I have faith, I have faith in, God. in God. One of the things that people tend to get in trouble with is they have faith in what they can do with what God's telling them to do. No matter whatever God's telling you, do it, but do it as unto the Lord, knowing that it's the Lord that's giving you the ability to do even what you're doing. And you keep a perspective of, I do this as unto the Lord, not as unto Ricky. Or whoever you are. My faith, my faith is more in God. My faith is in God. That he's the one telling me to do what I'm doing. And because he's the one telling me to do what I'm doing, he's going to crown my efforts with success. But well, how many people are, not, are, are doing what they want to do, like Pastor Justin said on Sunday, rather than God wants them doing it? They've got all these plans, but they want God to bless their plans. But they're not talking to God about his plans for their lives. I believe there's a lot of people in this world and Christians that have accomplished a lot that they're going to get up to heaven and God's going to say, well, 
Well, you know, I did this, and, and that's what he thought. He, Jesus actually ministered this. Didn't I cast out devil? Didn't I do? He, they didn't do what he was wanting them to do. Yeah. And then, this is simple. Is, are you trying to impress man, or are you trying to impress God? Because when you're trying to impress God, you're just going to do whatever God wants you to do. God, what do you want me to do? I'll do it. There are times you look at your job. You know, I really don't want to do that, Lord, but if that's what you're telling me to do, all right, let's do it, God, let's go. And all of a sudden, boom, get in there, and he crowns, and all of a sudden it flourishes and thrives, and it's not anything that you thought it was going to be when you first walked into it. Why? Because you're willing and obedient, and when you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But you can't be afraid of the circumstances or what God's asking you to do in those situations. Your trust has got to be in God, not the circumstance. That's, good. Amen. that's in every area of our lives. We cannot lean to our own flesh. Amen. Well, I'm good at this. Let me do this. Come on. Well, God says, that's, that's, that's not what I want you doing right now because I want to get you better at this. Well, we'll just wait, God. Well, you you got to figure it out better? Come on. Just keep on. If you're hitting a bunch of bumps and bruises and, oh, my goodness, late nights, and you're wondering, when's my life going to turn around? Start doing what God wants you to do and stop doing what you're trying to do. Why I don't why am I going this? Thing? All right, let's keep going. All right. What is the object of your faith? Now pay attention to this because it says half faith in God. What is the object of your faith? Is it the seeds you've sown? Are you believing for a harvest because you sowed all these seeds and your you, your seeds? And I'm not saying seed time and harvest time is always in effect, but you can't have more faith in what you're doing than what God's doing with your seed. Because when a person plants a seed, he doesn't sit there and wait for it and look for it and sit there and wait. And, come on. See, I planted you in the ground. Grow. No, God's the one that makes it grow. A good farmer, he knows he's planted it, he waters it, he does, it lets the sunlight go on, but he keeps on doing his thing, whatever it is. He knows that seed's going to produce. But who is this? Your faith is who makes it to grow? God. Say God. God. Makes my seed, makes my seed. Grow. grow. So I have faith in God, faith in God. More, than my seed. more than my seed. Hmm. Okay, come on. All right, what about, how about this? Do you, how, my, how many of y'all, the object of your faith? This is the object of your faith. I confess a thousand times. I confess that every single day. It should be manifested by now. <laughs> Where's the object of your faith? Is it in your works or is it in what God's doing with what you're doing in this situation? Is the object of your affection? What's the object of your affection? Hmm. Object of your faith, is it in the sermons you've listened to? Well, I've heard that sermon a hundred times. I've heard that message. Come on. Faith coming by hearing Brother Rick and hearing by the Word of God. Yeah. You have more faith than your, I, I listen to the Word all that. What are you doing with what you're listening to? <laughs> Pastor Justin said it. He says, faith without works is, that's scripture. And faith worketh by love, so you stop thinking about yourself because you're just in love with yourself and not loving anybody else. <laughs> I love y'all. Y'all know that, don't y'all? I'm like, I was like coming in there, and I was like, man, I haven't been in Wednesday. I'm always in the, over there with the youth, and I'm, I was excited about being here tonight with you guys, you know? But I was like, man, I was asking Big, I asked Joseph, I said, what, ask, what do you need to do? I was asking directions for tonight, just as far as the format of things. <laughs> So, but I, I, but I know y'all, I mean, I see y'all all the time. I love you. And I know that we're all believing, Amen. but what are we believing in? Are we believing more in what we're doing or, or are we believing more in who, in who is doing this things for us? Amen. He, he, all he, I'm telling you, the more we pay attention to what he wants us to pay attention, it's amazing what else gets done. He will, he's got you taken care of. You know a song I, was, I wrote it down? It was a, one of the songs I used to sing all the time in church. Was, and it was my grandfather's favorite song, but it was His Eyes on the Sparrow. Yeah. And I sing it in Spanish more than I sing it in, in English. So all day long I've been singing it. I was singing it at the house, wasn't I, babe? You know? Why? Because I, you got His Eyes on the Sparrow. You know He's watching you. What are you worried about? That's fear. 
You, got, you, you develop your faith in God more. God, you got my back. God, you got me. I'm meditating your word. You, you know my end from the beginning. I'm okay. You always cause me to triumph. I have confidence, Lord, that you're going to, no matter what it looks like, you're going to cause me to, Lord, what do you want to do today? What, what's on your heart today, God? Is there something I need to be doing? Oh, I'll minister to that person at work today. Yeah, I'll do that, Lord. No problem. Go buy that person this. Oh, yeah, I can do that, Lord. I can do that. That's cool. Well, not, well, little Johnny needs some shoes, and Lord, I, you know, people come, and they keep asking and asking, and that, that's perfectly fine, but I'm telling you, if you're going to see awesome results, is you should start doing whatever it is he's telling you to do, and all those other things you've been asking for. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Woo-hoo. All right, so, or how about the principles of one, here's, this is good, the principle or the prince, the once, one-time prince that is now your king and lord. Is your faith more in the principles or the prince that became your king and lord? It's, it's, it's good. Amen? It's good. Now, I'm not, I'm, I'm, there's real, pay attention to this. Don't stop doing the word of God. Don't stop doing what it takes to develop your faith. You can't, and actually, Sunday morning, that's part, probably where we're going to hit pretty hard is the process. How do you develop in the process of your righteousness? How do you develop that? And it's in, by faith. What do you keep doing? But your faith has got to be not in what you're doing. It's in, in whom you have believed. Your eyes, our affection has got to constantly be looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, to adoring and, and absorbing God. for who he, You'll see the infinite wisdom that he has for us as you continue to look into the perfect law of liberty that frees you. You will know the truth, and that truth will set you free. How? Not by searching all these other things out, by searching him. Because he's the revealer of truth. He is the spirit of truth. Right? Wouldn't you just like to know the truth? Stop being afraid of what's going on in your world. And have faith in God. Let's look at some circumstances in the Bible where people struggled with this. Because, you know, this isn't nothing new, right? It's nothing new. It's the small foxes that spoil the vine. Well, I've heard that. Well, do whatever the word's telling you to do. Just don't hear it. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. All right, let's go to um, 1 John 3, 19 through 21. I'm going to just read some scriptures to you. Take a deep seat and far away look. Go along with us here. It says, by this we shall come to know, perceive, reckon. This is the Amplified recognize and understand that we are of the truth and can reassure quiet, pacify our hearts in his presence. Whenever our hearts are tormenting, self-accusation make us feel guilty and condemn us. Our, say my heart. My heart. My heart. My heart. God is never going to condemn you. Now, we're quick to condemn ourselves. And there is a condemner, and his name is Satan. And you got to recognize where fear is coming from. That type of fear is not ever coming from God. Draw a line in the sand. That type of fear never comes from God. That if you don't do this, this, and this, I'm going to get you. No. That is not the way God works. He's a good God all the time. Every good and perfect gift comes from him. Amen. Never say, James chapter 1, when you are tempted, tested, and tried, never say, God says this, that you are tempted, trust, tested, and tried of me. Because I will never tempt, test, or try any man. <laughs> Go read it for yourself. But it's good. I'm glad. I ain't got to worry about God trying to tempt me with something. Or this, this is another thing. A good daddy, I'm not going to allow my, I'm not even going to allow my kid, hello, to go. Because you hear this all the time. Well, God allowed that to happen. No, 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 no. You allowed it to happen. Yes, you watching my way of internet? It's a reality. He's given the baton to me and you. You cast out devils. God cast this devil. No, you cast the devil out. You got the power. Stand in 
that righteousness that Pastor Justin was talking to us about. Amen? Amen. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Well, I did and he didn't. Well, you didn't do it. You didn't resist him. Resist. Oh, get out of here. (laughs) Devil. No. Get mad about it. Come on now. Just let somebody try to mess with your kid. (laughs) Just be real. I'm just saying. You can do whatever you, you feel like you're supposed to do. But bear somebody else? Mm-mm. Uh, 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 uh. And God's no different. Yeah. Amen. He loves us, man. Yeah. He is good. Amen. Okay. So don't be afraid that God's doing something to you ever. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Slap that down and reset. Yeah. Say slap down. Slap down. Reset. reset. Y'all remember the reset buttons? Y'all remember those on Atari and, you know, Xbox, that reset button. Man, you're messing up, and uh, we hit the reset button. Man, let's start over. You know, it makes you look good, right? You get a better score, right? <laughs> but you can reset on your tape. You can do all kinds. There's a lot of reset buttons. What does it do? It takes it back to its original place, right? That's right. Slap down, reset. We do that all the time in youth. Just slap it down, reset. Okay. For we are, uh, he is greater than our conscience. God, this is so good. For we are in God's hands, for he is above and greater than our conscience, our hearts. And he knows, perceives, and understands everything. Nothing is hidden from him. And beloved, if our conscience, our hearts do accuse us, if they do make us feel guilty or condemn us, we have confidence, complete assurance, and boldness before God. Why? Because God doesn't deal with us in the natural. Come on. He doesn't do that. You're the one that's doing that. He does not condemn you for anything. He says, uh, what does it say? Romans chapter 8. Let's go over there real quick. I got it in my notes somewhere. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. John 8, 7 through 11. When you go through this on the back side of this, Here's a situation where the woman who was caught in adultery is brought to Jesus. And in the process of them bringing her to Jesus, they are accusing her. Who's the accuser of the brethren? Satan. Jesus does something real. This is so important because you cannot allow condemnation to come on you when you're walking with God and seeking God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. He's going to try to bring up your past all day long. You bring up his future. Seriously. You need to be constant about that because he's going to try to tell you how good you're not. He's he's the greatest smack. Why do you think they smack talk so much? Because he's the one instigating it. He is the smack talker of all smack talkers. He knows that the only thing he can do is talk. He's like a roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion. You need to slap him down, resist him, and he will flee from you. Those are not my thoughts. Taking every, who's supposed to take, go look at that in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. You and I are supposed to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So when any type of fear whatsoever, oh, I don't know where my kids are going to, I don't know where my kids are. Slap it down. I thank you, Lord, that great is the peace of my children. Hello? And I, and I worship and I adore you. And because of that, that my offspring is going to be blessed. And I have a promise of my children's children to a thousand generations. You slap that down. You resist that temptation to go in that direction. Fear is always at the door because it's got a name and his name is Satan. He, that's what he did to get Adam and Eve out of the garden. He made them afraid that they wouldn't be able to fulfill everything that they were capable of fulfilling. Oh my goodness, we're not going to be able to... Wow. God's keeping that. No, God wasn't keeping that from him. He was keeping it for him. Now all I had to do was stay in there and stay doing it. Just, God, what do you want? Listen more to what God's telling you than what the rest of the world's telling you. Amen? Amen. Isn't that good? Okay, so there's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Look at that. So the woman of the well, look at this. It says, when Jesus had lifted up himself, because, you know, he went down there, he's writing on the ground and everything. He said unto her, woman, where are those thine accusers? Because they all left. He said, any of y'all who hasn't cast, who has never made a sin, cast the first stone. He knew they knew how to condemn themselves, so they get out of there. 
Because they were more paying attention to the natural than they were the spiritual. Because the carnal mind is the enemy against God. Don't get, what, were they, what, what happened to the Pharisees? And the, they got more wrapped up in their works and their system and their process than in God. Yeah. Woo! Yes. That's relief, right? That's exciting. All I got to do is just keep running towards God. Fall more and more intimate with the Father. Just experience and reverently worship Him. and Get excited about what He wants. Rahab did this. She, she, she was like, dude, I, your God is the God, man. Just, I don't care what these guys think they can do to me. Just, if you, tell, if you promise me your God's got me covered, I'm good. And she was willing to lay down her life for them. Why? Because she feared God more than she feared man. Amen. Well, you don't know. They'll take my home away from me, Pastor. So? God can give you a better home than that. Look at the, and I want you to go there. I'm going to just preach to you a little bit. I don't want to keep you too, 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 too long tonight. But the reality of it, even the Israelite women, they're supposed to, the midwives were actually supposed to kill. You can go look at this in Exodus chapter 1. The midwives were under order by Pharaoh to kill the babies if they were boys. The midwives, they were, high, they were supposed to kill those babies. And the midwives feared, it says, the midwives feared God more than they feared Pharaoh. Yes. Pharaoh was a killer, man. He'd kill, he'd kill his own kid. He didn't care. Don't you cross me? They didn't care. You know what it says? It says, God blessed them, the midwives, with houses and wealth and children. God blessed them. Let's go there. Y'all need to see that for yourself. Go there real quick. Exodus chapter 1. It says, in verse 15, it says, that It came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all this people saying, Every son that is born you shall cast into the river and every daughter you shall save alive. Therefore God dealt with the midwives and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men's children alive. And the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of one was, uh, their names are in the Bible. Right. Yeah. <sighs> That's cool. Yes. And I don't know how to say either one of them, so Shipra. <laughs> And the name of the other one was Pua, okay? And he said, when you do the office of the midwife to the Hebrew women, and he, and he see them, I'm going to read this from my Bible. There's something not right with my printing right here. Exodus chapter 1. Get over here with you. So good. But the midwives, I'm in verse 17. The midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called the midwives and said unto them, why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwife said unto Pharaoh, look, listen to their excuse, I like this. Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and delivered are the mid <laughs> and are delivered are the ere the midwives come in unto them. So what are they saying? He says, they, they dropped the babies before we can get in there and take them out. <laughs> That's exactly what she just said. That's pretty funny. That's good. <laughs> Therefore, God dealt with the midwives, and the people mid multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, he made them houses. God blessed them for blessing his people. For not fearing Pharaoh. Amen. What are you afraid of? <laughs> Come on. We used to say something when I was, in, when I was growing up. I just get personal. Yeah. We were growing up, man. And I, I hung out, me and my cousins. We did a lot of crazy stuff. So I wasn't all saint, like really seriously. So, But we would, we would be balling or doing something and just 
being real, and you know, we, we, someone would say, hey, you scared? You scared? Go to church. Go to church. Go to church. And we would say that, meaning that. Have some faith, man. Because, you know, you get bald, you get the, we, we, you know, we did some things. And so, but you know, you, you, we, we would say that to each other. Are you scared? Go to church. Why? Because, you know, faith in God will take care of anything that you're going through. And we knew that. Even though we were doing all kinds of stuff, we, we knew that God was bigger than any circumstance that we're facing, ever. So you're scared, go to church. Are you afraid? What, you, what are you afraid of? Seriously, no, no, I'm just, no, I, I just say that. I hope that doesn't rub anybody wrong, but I say that because I want you to see something here. God, no matter what you are afraid of right now in your life, God's bigger than that. Yes. No matter what it is, he's bigger than that. He's not, he, and you know what else? He knows what's going on. But he wants us to focus more on him than what's going on. Yeah. The more you pick with the problem, the bigger the problem gets. Yes. You ever have one of them sores and you just get picking? It, it gets, just gets worse. Just leave it alone. Quítale. Leave it alone. <laughs> just let it go. You know? Yes. Just, you know, and, and trust in God. Amen. He's going to perfect that which concerns you Amen. if you'll trust in him. Rely upon him. Lean on him with all your heart. And then lean not on your own understanding. Because your understanding is going to try, well, if I did that, but if I really, if I do that, man, how's that going to work? Just trust God. Hold you. Okay, you can see here that the midwives, they trusted, they decided to trust God more than they trusted, or, or they, they worshiped, they had that fear of God. Like, man, God's, God's it. God's bigger than this. And we're going to fear God more than we fear you, Pharaoh. In that situation, that's pretty good testimony, isn't it? Isn't this good? You think about some of the other great patriarchs that went on before us. Noah, you don't think he got made fun of constantly? Year after year after year? The ridicule? Come on. You don't think there's... They had never seen it rain on the face of the earth. You don't think there were sometimes, Lord, I hope you're going to come through with this one. <laughs> what does this look like? Seriously. For years. For years. Some of you don't want to stand a day. <laughs> come on, God. I've been waiting for a week. <laughs> Lord, please. When's it going to happen? <laughs> He's got you covered. Think about what he's doing for you right now. Is he providing for you right now? Hallelujah. Start getting thankful. You got shoes on your feet? Mm, that's nice. Uh -huh. got a shower. You took a shower today. Wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Seriously, amen. You start getting thankful for what he's doing. Think about what he has done for you. Just a, an attitude of gratitude will just continue to take you into the presence of God. And when you get into the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And when you have fullness of joy, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And when you have strength, there is, you can do anything. Amen. Right? And so you've you got to focus more on the solution than you are the problem. Yeah. But the reality of it is the, the thoughts come. Yeah. Fears always are rooted to thoughts. Yes. Right? Yes. right? Yes. So the moment the thoughts start taking, that's the moment that you and I have to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Yes. That's not my thought. My thoughts are pure and holy, lovely, just, whatsoever things are pure. That's what it says there in Philippians, right? Yeah. We think on these things. Yes. Do not be anxious for anything, but in all things through prayer and supplication, make your requests known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind which are in Christ Jesus. Who is peace? The Holy Spirit. If you don't know anything else to do, start praying in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. He's given you a heavenly language for a reason. You, you got to see that because the Bible says real plain and candidly is that with stammering lips and another tongue will I speak unto my people, but they would not have it. How many of y'all are tired? Because in that the very next verse it says, this is the rest wherewith I would cause the weary to rest, but they wouldn't have any. They're going, that's not, I don't get what you're saying. I don't know what you're doing. I'm praying unto God, not unto man. He's given me a prayer language. We're in a body of believers. Are y'all believers in here? Yes. This is the believers. So we need to continue to teach. 
You see us operating in the gifts and the strength. Build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, praying in other tongues. What is it doing? Building yourself up in faith versus fear. So when fear comes, there's times where you just have to tap into the Holy Ghost and start praying. And if you don't have anything good to say, just say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And tap into your prayer line. Start praying in the Holy Spirit. Because it says there, it says when you're praying in the Spirit, you're praying the perfect will of God for your situation. So it builds you up to be able to hand. And you know what? I've always come to understand when I start praying in the Spirit, the moment I get down, I start pre- the Word starts coming out of me. Greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm an heir to the throne. What is that? That's scripture because I'm praying in the spirit. It's building me up and I'm getting stronger in my spirit, man. It's overcoming the fear that's in my life. Brother Colton said this, fear tolerated is faith contaminated. When you just, oh, that's, you tolerate. Don't even listen to it. When the, when the news comes on, the, the bad news, just turn it off. Don't li- quit looking at stuff on your Facebook or on your Instagram or everything and find out about everybody's business because then you think it's going to be your business. Yeah. And you don't need that business in your life. You need the word of God in your life. Yeah. And you need a relationship with God. You need to hear more from God than you are from Instagram, Facebook, and Mimi and Papa. Hello? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Unless they're preaching the word of God to you. Now that, that's, enough. that's a good thing. You know what? If you, if you find people, even on your Facebook, don't. It, you know what? It's a great tool. You, there's some great messages that people post. and you, you know what? But if you keep seeing that person that's got that negative or that post you shouldn't be looking at. For real though? Come on. Just take them off of your Facebook. It's really easy. And they don't even know that you're not following them anymore. So you didn't ruin a friend in the process of it. Come on, but it it slaps down what Satan's trying to feed you with. Come on. It slaps that down. You and I have got to be the ones to stop it, though. And your wife or your husband's not always with you to see what you're watching. Uh I don't know why I said that, but I said it. So receive it. So go ahead and take it. Come on. All right, amen. All right, hallelujah. So just, just come on with, what is this? What is this doing though? Dealing with the fears that are in your life and, and how those fears are coming into your life on a regular basis. You know, there's some people that you get around with and it's always so negative. Stop getting around them. Yeah. Or, or if they, if, and, and you know what? Even if you have to be around, look, I'd, I'd rather not listen to that. Or you know what? You're going into the break room. Get your headphones on before you ever go in there so you don't have to deal with it when you get in there. Seriously. Because they're going to see that peace and that calm that's all over you, and they may have all hell going on in their life, but when, because you're going to stand your ground, you're going to be who God's created you to be, and you're going to operate more in faith than you operate in fear, they're going to recognize that. And one day they're going to say, how come you don't talk about all your problems? Right. Well, let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you how good God is. Let me tell you, I put all my trust in God. I don't put my trust in that stuff that you listen to, that you're talking about all the time. I don't even know what's going on anymore in the world. Seriously. Because you're more focused on what God's doing than what you are the world's doing. You're meditating more on him than you are the circumstances that are going on in the world. Feed your faith and starve your doubts. Feed your faith, starve your fears. Fears are going to come. Brother Hagin says it's one thing to let a fear come over your head. It's another thing to let it build a nest up there. Bird comes over, you know. They may drop something. But don't let them build a nest and do it and live there. So don't let thoughts do that to you. Right. Amen. Change those thoughts. Change them with the word of God. Amen. And they tell you, you can't do this. And you, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So the moment that can't gets in there, that's a four-letter word in our household. <laughs> Seriously. My kids knew that when they were little. You get a pow-pow for saying that word. <laughs> or push-ups. When they got little push-ups, sit-ups, you do what you got to do. But you get that out of your mouth. <laughs> write sentences, yeah. That, came, that guy got real good. They say, well, I, I'm not able to do that at the moment. <laughs> you know, kids are really smart about that kind of stuff. But, but you know what? We're, we're not little kids, right? We're not, come on. 
We're growing up. We want the good stuff, right? Because you can't do things when you're still a little kid. Yeah. You want to be able to walk in what God has for you. So you, when you were a child, you thought like a child. But when you're an adult, you act like an adult, right? So you put away, the Bible says you put away those childish things. Those fears, I'm telling you, fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Whatever you're meditating on is coming to pass in your life. So just meditate on the right thing. Change those things that you're listening to, that you're, the, the people that you're hanging around with, or the conversations that you have with the people, especially when they talk about other people, because then you're, they're developing fear in you of that other person they're talking about. You begin to fear that other person because you're listening to that gossip. And you're afraid they're going to do that to you just like they're doing that to them. Slap down. Reset. So what, you, what do you do? You don't slap them down. Come on, no, seriously. That's not what you do. You, you handle the situation by just saying, you know, hey, I'd rather not talk about so-and-so. Do you, if you need to talk, should I get you a meeting with them? I had one of my mentors, this is no joke. If you walked up to him and you began to talk about somebody, he said, wait just a second. Hey, John was just talking about you, and I thought you might want to talk to John. <laughs> That's exactly what he would do. He said, come to my office for a second. Let's, let's, let's talk about this together. Come on, that's good. That's good. It's a, I'm telling you, yes. it, it, it's real important. There's certain ways to handle certain things in your life that are going to help you. You know what? They will never bring up so-and-so around you again. <laughs> Seriously. And it's not that you don't, you don't like the person that you're hanging, that's even you're working with. It's just you don't want to have to be subject to that kind of situation. Yes. That's right. Come on. So you change the situation. Amen? Amen? Okay. Let me just see. Holy Spirit, is there anything else? Say this with me. I refuse, I refuse to, fear. to fear. I choose, I choose to, walk to walk by faith in God. In God. I will slap down, will slap down fears, fears and, reset and reset them to the Word of God. Word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? Amen. Well, Praise God for the word. Amen? Amen. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any double-edged sword. Amen. But we've got to use the word of God. Amen? Amen? So fight your fears with your faith. And your faith has to be in who? God. Now, and I said the system, your faith is in God. And whatever God tells you to do, you need to be doing it. Amen? Amen.